Okay, we're back. I got it welding done. So I got a weld on this side pretty good, that side pretty good. Two big welds across there to get it all tied together. I'm going to have to weld the uh, front lighter. One up with that much clearance, which is good. I bent this up a little bit. So got a bunch of clearance there now, a bunch of clearance there. And I still got a pretty good stroke. So I think we're good on that. So now I got to deal with this hole right here. So we want to slot it up or down or somewhere. So I got my rat tail file here. Which gives you a pretty good idea where you're going to cut. And I also bought the grinder. What did I do with the grinder? There it is. Power tool grinder. You can get in there like that and get in there pretty quickly with this. So you got two different ways of doing it. This thing's going to dig in and chew in real heavy when it's like this. So, so you can go either one. I'll do both. Show you how they work. You got two different tools and they both will do the same job, but one might be better than the other. Who knows? So we need to go up on this and down with the other one. Make sure what you're going to hit over there. And I'm digging in with the the bottom and the top at the same time. I'm pulling the file straight. A quarter inch, as I recall. So if it goes all the way through, quarter inch. There you go. Keep digging in that too, my finger. Alright, so, see it's starting to get a hole, but it still is not a quarter inch, it's oval shaped, so it still needs a little work, so i got to quit going side to side and concentrate up and down, the up and down is at this plane, not this plane, that makes a difference too, so, still going up and down, a little more, this angle here. And I'm hitting the side of the oil tank over there also. So. Okay, that was all up. Now we go all down. They get the idea. So, slow progress, but uh, slowly making a hole where I want it to go. All right. That's the other power tool to do for us. That's going to dig in real bad. When they do that, it doesn't work very well. Quick work of making a hole though. There you go. We get real thin on top, thinner on the bottom. So it had a quarter inch hole that they were using in there. It's this size right here. And we definitely got room for that in there. Lots of clearance. 
I like bigger hardware, 5 16 There you go, 5 16 That's the one I wanted in there. Okay, so with that in there, it'd be hard to tighten it down, but you can put that in there if you want it to. Not quite that size, but it's close. Really close. Okay, what I'm going to use for now, quarter inch. I think that's what I was going to use. Oh, I had 5 sixteenths out already. Yeah, I already knew what I wanted to do. See, it's got a massive hole back there. That's why I want a bigger size. Okay, well, if we're going to go with 5 sixteenths, then this thing have a problem here. We're limited on sizing. There's no way you can run these big washers in there. So I don't think so. I think we'll go back to quarter inch. We're gonna be a big flange nut in the back. Yeah, thick washer there, thin washer there. Use a quarter inch coarse bolt with a flange nut. Locking flange nut. See this kind right here. Seriations. We didn't need that, did we? Uh, there it is, right in front of me. Need that. Need a bolt. Yeah, probably not super long. No, probably. Might be about the right height. For now. I'm going to go to a locking nut later, it'll be too short. Yeah. Leave that one for now. We might change our idea before we're done with these projects. A quarter inch washer in here. Quarter inch washer for the primary. Oh, forget to put those back. Alright, there's our hardware we're going to use. The bottom bracket we'll have to make and weld on. Those I attach, oh, I need two washers. Those I attach with the, um, the bracket to the primary and I just weld it to the frame. Just like I did the old tank bracket. Make everything and weld it to it. Okay, we're still gonna need a space between here so I'm still gonna use a thick washer for that. I'm gonna use one of these washers for that because that was what was working before. Actually, a flat washer, another flat washer as a spacer, that, and we're a little bit short on thread. short. Okay, next size up in length. The other problem is, is this is all different angles, so we have to tighten this all up to see how much things are going to move around. I'm thinking the primer is going to lose on the tug of war between it and the, and the oil tank. Okay, I got a blank now. There we go. and tighten it up. So see how the primary cord is going like this. 
So it was losing the tug of war because it's thinner material than all this other junk over here. We can't have that though. That's going to warp and punch all over the board. Okay, now we're going to loosen this up and see how much it moves. It moves a lot. Bring it back down. Take our trusty old crescent wrench. Stuff it up in there where it needs to be. And we're going to try to bend this thing. Can't get behind it enough to, to do anything. Nope. Can't grab a hold of anything with a bolt in there. But I did destroy the threads on this bolt. Pretty good job. All right, it makes a locking bolt. Okay, so the primary needs to be me solid slightly. We're not the primary oil thing. So we have to get this lever out of the way. This stuff out of the way too while we're at it. Okay. So we know the old thing needs to be bent toward me. Okay. Spacer got a lot wider now. So we use a little thicker washer. Okay. Looks like that might work. Our bolt again. Get a washer. And we got our nut. Parts aren't happy with each other anymore. Okay, so now we're going to look to see if the primary moves on us a little bit. Get over there so you can see it. See if it moves. It stayed pretty even. That's pretty tight. I'm going to loosen it up. I'm not seeing it move. Okay. So that worked pretty good. So we bent the bracket on the oil tank to fit the primary. So the primary bolts in nice and flat and square like it's supposed to. It doesn't move when you tighten it down. We don't want it to move. Okay, so we'll still get a big gap there. Tight on the bottom though, but it should be clearance. Hopefully is enough. We'll find out. Okay. Here's our clutch. Nice and free, huh? We'll tighten all this stuff down here a little bit. Okay. Make this pretty loose. 
this so I can work with it better. Okay. Take our washer off here so the clutch will actually work. Put our lever back on so we can see what's happening. called adjusting a clutch over here. A rough adjustment, but adjustment. Working correctly. This is way too far out. Thinking a throw out bearing is not where it belongs. The screw is really screwed up too, which is not helping. So this system's not going to work the way it is right now. See, I'm releasing the clutch with the screw right here. The screw in. Okay, now we go in until it just touches. Back it off a little bit. And that goes a long ways. We have no clutch movement. Clutch does not work. So the problem is the cover over there, the arm that goes on the throwout bearing if something's not right. So we have to unadjust it enough to make it where it doesn't drag, doesn't bottom out at least the clutch. But the problem is the lever is not hitting over here. I'm taking all my travel to get the lever over where it starts to push, and there's nothing left to disengage the clutch. See, right here at the very end is where it engages, which is not going to work for where to travel. So, something's wrong over the throat bearing side over there. This doesn't surprise me. Everything goes up and down, wiggle waggle. It's just starting to try to release, but it's not nothing going on. So the clutch will never work like it is right now, but we got to pull the kicker cover off anyway, so I don't really care. So to make it work better, I just got to tighten the thing up a little bit. It's just some resistance. It's not working correctly at all, but at least I can tell there's something happening. But it's bottoming out before it hits the cover, which is not correct. Maybe I'll get the cover now. Ah. 
acts like it's working, but it's not. All right, so there's definitely issues with that. What a shocker. I'm shocking there's issues with the motorcycle. Not have the nut for here. Don't find me one. There's a cover that goes on it. So let's go find a nut real quick. It had a compensator side up on it. Now we're going solid sprocket. So before all my parts get put out of here, I need to grab me a big nut. Somewhere down in here are some big ass nuts. Uh, I'm looking where I put them all. There we go. Modified, unmodified. Nope, is that modified? Modified. There's the correct nut. There's the nut I'm going to use. I need just a regular nut, but I don't have a regular nut, I don't think. That's a big nut, 7 eighths thread. Let's pick a big nuts like that one there. I got coarse thread, but I don't know about fine thread. Let's see, coarse thread we have. Fine thread? No. Industrial nuts are easily. Not the right ones. That looks like that might be the one. Ooh, that's a fancy one. That's a grid. That's a gridded nut. It's like the right size and everything. Ooh, look at that. It even almost goes on. Boy, those threads are got some issues with them. Yeah, oh yeah, those threads are heating it up. Whatever you put on there for a nut is going to be unhappy. Pissed off is more of a phrasing, I think. Nothing like taking a nice, good nut. Over a bad shaft. Motor turns over now, though. I think I'm going to want to chew up a nice good nut with a crappy shaft. Alright, I'll be back. I'll see if I find something else to use.